9.30. Why did I sleep that long? Don't bother making the bed. I can do that. What? Who are you? You've never been here before. I'm the maid. I'll make the bed. Uh, I, mean, I could have guessed that, but what's your name? I'm the maid. No, you, you aren't answering me. What's your name? I'm Chris. I do not have a name. I was never given one. Everyone's given a name. I do not remember getting one. Yeah, neither do I. I mean, I wasn't even a day old when I got it. You know what? Never mind. I'm going to be really late. Oh, I laid them out for you already. No need to go in there. <laughs> All right. Well, I really have to take some pictures. I'll be back before dinner. Chris. Evening. Oh, never mind. It's none of my business. No, go on. Say it. No, it's none of my business. A maid is supposed to work, not socialize. I'm sure Mrs. Johnson won't mind you socializing while working. It is improper. I'm sorry. I should not have been bothering you. It, it's no bother at all. I mean, ask me anything you want. Socialize as much as you like. I was just going to ask how your day was. It was awful. Might I ask why? Uh, well, I went up to Central Park to do my photography like any other day. And I was taking these beautiful shots of the flora and fauna. Everything was going just fine. Great, actually. When this guy, he seemed to be just a bit older than I, he ran into the park. I couldn't see his face. He had, had a veiled-like hood on. Yes, and? He pulled a gun out of his pocket. A gun. I mean, everyone else panicked, but I was scared stiff. And then the guy points at a gun directly at my head. He said to me, you never gave me what I wanted. And then he shot me. But it seems that the gun was just blanks. You know, I fell back from a little bit of shock, but then I just got up and I ran all the way back here. I didn't take the train. I just ran as fast as possible. Oh my. Quite the exciting days you have. And I'd be fine with the days I used to have with my parents, just sitting at home and watching television and playing foosball with my friends. What happened to those days? I'd rather not talk about that now. I, I'm gonna make myself some tea. You know, it'll, it'll calm me down a bit. Would you like some? Oh, no, thank you. After your tea, maybe you should get some sleep. It's getting awfully late. Perhaps we could, should continue this later? You were out all day. I might be asleep by the time you come back in. Oh, okay. Good night. Hello? Yes, this is the maid. What? Oh no, please. I'll do anything. Please. Can I have another day? Thank you. I don't want to go, but for the good of her, I will. Goodbye. Finish making your tea. You left five minutes ago to make tea. That was yesterday. It was? Oh, it seems like five minutes ago. How was your day? Uh, 
Well, I, I went up to Central Park to do my photography like any other day, and I was taking beautiful shots of the flora, and that's been happening every day. Why doesn't he ever put bullets in that gun? Can I trust you? Of course you can. I'm not sure how to say it, but I have sort of a major kind of deja vu, like right now. Are you in danger? Well, I... Pretend I'm your best friend. Whenever I'm in fatal danger, I get sick. So I end up going on to a different path than I was supposed to go on. My parents and I were supposed to go to Florida for summer vacation, but suddenly, a week or so before the trip, I got awfully sick. You know, I started to have nightmares of a hard plane crash and many dying. It was traumatizing. I told my parents of my sense that the plane ride wouldn't be safe, but they needed to go. There was someone there, I believe, and they needed to see. They decided I was old enough to stay home alone while I went away for a few weeks. It was five years ago, so I was only 12. I begged my parents to stay, and, and they wanted to, but it was too important for them. They hired our milkwoman, Shelby, and the paper boy, Tommy, to look after me, you, you know, to make sure I was okay and all. I would have been scared. I was so scared. You know, I held on to them as they were leaving, trying to get them to stay home, but it didn't work. Shelby wanted nothing to do with me. She, she dismissed me with a flick of her wrist. And Tommy just told me to stay away from people. I was a young, rich girl who was alone. He made a strong first impression, so, so I trusted him. He, Tommy was friendly towards me. He even started going out of his way to pay me a visit after his regular route. He would talk on the porch for a bit, having a good time. I wish I could have just stayed that way. What happened after that? One time we were talking and, and someone started calling me and he knocked my phone onto the concrete and it splintered into three pieces. He started to get more attached, you know, showing up more and more, and I humored him for a bit. Maybe I was leading him on. I, the things started to get weird. You know, he was inviting himself in, and, and as I tried to clean up after him, I thought, him, I thought I saw him stuffing a sheet of paper into his bag, and, and after that, I saw that the hotel's phone number was missing, and then I was in the ladies' room, already annoyed that I had to put the seat down when I heard a loud crash and then Tommy's innocent voice, oopsies. I, I ran out and I saw that the wires hooking up the TV were split, and, and I saw my address on his newspapers, but he never offered them to me. And he acted as if he didn't hear me when I asked for them. Why didn't you just kick him out? You only make that mistake once. And, and I yelled at him to get out, and he just came over and, and hugged me. I was so alone. I, I considered letting him in. I was losing my mind. I, do I let him touch me? And I felt so nice with human contact. Or, or do I just stay isolated? What happened next? I thought I wanted to die. And it was too much. I needed something, just, just one tiny thing to push me over the limit. And I finally heard from my neighbor that my dreams about that awful plane crash were real. My parents were dead. And the scariest thing was, my initial reaction was, I told you so. I didn't, I didn't feel grief or sorrow, just the fact that, that I was right and they were wrong. And then? I'd rather not talk about that now. Tell me what happened I don't next. want to. But I do. If you're hurting me. I'm sorry. I gotta go. Hello. Yes, this is the maid. I know, but... Please, one more day.
could she be? She's always here long before I wake up in the morning. Why won't this door open? She, I suppose I'll just get an outfit from the wash. You know, doing anything different than this will make me late. You know, I'm, I'm rather behind in my photos. I really need to update my website. I really hope that man isn't there today. He's been disrupting my work for so long. I, I know him, even though he's wearing a mask. I, I just can't quite place a finger on where I know him from. It's called presque vu, knowing something or someone that you can't quite remember. I, I remember when I would learn a new phrase or concept and being, being so excited to tell my parents. I can't help thinking of my parents when I see him. I better go. I can't do that again. No, God, please, no. thinking about this place. At first, I didn't quite know what this was. You know, being taken in here to the Johnson house, being threatened by a mysterious man every day. But now I think I know a proper name for it. And what might that be? Hell. Who was that for? Don't you ever say that about this place. Do you hear me, Christina? Never ever say that about a place that has taken you in when there is no obvious reason that they took you in for. Don't call me Christina. That's what Tommy called me. Never call this place help again. You hear? Fine. It's a purgatory. Like, like when something or someone isn't good enough for heaven, but bad enough for hell. This place is a blessing. Don't you ever treat it otherwise. Yeah. Is it a blessing or a curse? Hey, back, Christina. You never gave me what I wanted. Who are you? I'll be glad when you're dead. Answer the question. Stop talking! Answer when someone is speaking to you. Does it matter? Now just stay still and let me do my job. <laughs> do your job? What are you? The Mafia? And what do you have against you? You aren't supposed to be talking! Costas makes it all the more difficult. She won't be pleased at all. Not at all! Tell me? Thank God you missed. I didn't miss. What do you mean? Look at your hand, Christina. I always shoot you. It's only a question of if you move on or not. It's like you said to the maid before. This is a purgatory. Who are you? I'm most people's worst nightmare. The rent collector? Be serious, Christina. I am the next in line to be death. What are you talking about? Before I can become death, I must prove myself worthy. I had to kill a family. I chose yours. You made the plane crash? Yes. You killed my parents. And I would have become death if it weren't for you and your meddling dreams. Why didn't you just go on the plane? Why couldn't you just let go? My parents are dead because of you. Yeah. Yeah. They're as dead as a coffin nail. And there's nothing you can do about it. 
Think about it, Christina. You're all alone. Why can't you just accept your own death? I beg your pardon? You died. But you wouldn't accept it. I died. Yes, Christina, you're dead! This is what a lost soul lacks. The ability to face or realize their own death. See, every time I shoot you, you force yourself to believe that I miss. You won't look at your hand. You won't embrace the pain of the gunshot wound. This is what keeps you here instead of passing on. When did I give in? You hung yourself in the guest room closet of your house in New Jersey. The guest room closet? Oh my god, who is the maid? Please tell me. The maid is your mature side. It's her job to help you overcome your resistance to death. The maid is me? Yeah. Also, lost souls must accept their death to move on. The maid can't just tell you you're a lost soul. She has to shift you in the right direction. If I'm a lost soul, how come you can tell me? Because this time, you accepted it. You finally decided to find out what was going on. I think I'm ready now. I'm ready to not be a lost soul. Uh, I want to do something with my life now, or my afterlife. So, what do I do? Do I, do I pack my bags or something? You have to die again. How? Would you shoot me or something? If you like. No, 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 no. Not right now. I need to, I need to do a few things first before I go. Okay. Uh, why Manhattan? What do you mean? I mean, why did I come to Manhattan to be in purgatory? Why not? New Jersey or, or Delaware. You always said you wanted to visit Manhattan. you might want a more homey feeling. What's going on? Nothing. We're setting everything right. Thank you so much, me. I really should listen to you more often. Let's do this! <laughs> Chris! It's okay, May. Everything's finally okay. 